Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Well, hi everyone, welcome to Photoshop User TV. I'm Corey Barker and today I have a very special guest because we have a very light crew today because the guys are gone. They're all in California for the Google Plus conference out in San Francisco. It starts today actually. All right. But in their place I have brought in NAPS creative director, Mr. Felix Nelson. Hi. How you doing? How uh, you? Hello, everyone. Uh, you know, Corey scraping the bottom of the barrel today. I guess you had to go get the second. I had to run around the office, office <laughs> looking for someone. Otherwise, I would have had to do this show solo, and I just can't. I would have been talking to, you know. No I, one. We're going to have to get like a, a teddy bear or, you know, like a, a dummy that can sit in, yeah. you know, something like that. But no, I, I had to get Felix on because Felix is awesome. So he's going to talk about a couple of things he's got coming up uh, in a future issue of uh, Photoshop. Is that yep. right? Because we are sponsored by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals and Photoshop User Magazine. This is the current issue, and I think you're going to talk about what is actually on the cover right yeah, now. Yeah, actually going to talk about how we built the cover on that. Uh, and, so he's going to talk about yeah. that a little bit later. We also have a special guest drop-in. Um, we have Lindsay Adler, fashion photographer from New York City. Great. Very cool. She's going to be doing something for us in just a little bit. But I'm going to kick things off with a little tiny 3D tip, not surprisingly. But um, this is actually something... Um, just going to dive right in here. I've got a little graphic I'm kind of working on right now. It's in the process. Uh, I wanted to create an image where a saw blade's kind of cutting through wood, and it's kind of coming along nicely, but I thought I would show you how easy it is to take a 2D image and really make it look convincingly 3D. So here I have this uh, saw blade, and I'm just going to go ahead and extract it from a white background, and my simple cool trick for that is just simply selecting the background first. Yep, let's add this little area here. And I'm simply going to go under Select, Inverse, and then press Command-J. It brings that element to its own layer. Now, I'm going to go ahead and load, keep that active selection. And then really easy, here in CS6, it's so much easier to create 3D now. I mean, right. I, I, you said yourself you're probably experimenting. Yeah, so, yeah some of the things that I, they've done to it is just simplified some of the menus oh, and yeah. the panels. It's, it's much better. At I mean, the fact way. that they've just gotten rid of Repuse and everything's so interactive on it, just, right. it just makes a world of difference. So. Um, so with this selection active on this layer, I'm simply going to go to 3D and choose new 3D extrusion from selected layer. And it's going to think about it, crunch it, and there it goes. So if I go ahead and rotate around here, let's get my rotate 3D tool. Oh, it doesn't want to move. Oh, there, there you go. go. OK. So now you can move it. Now it looks like just a big you know, gear from something, it's just that extrusion's a bit more harsh than I want it to be, or a bit deeper than I want it to be. So, this is what I love. I always get my 3D panel and my properties panel right next to each other because whatever line item you select here reflects the properties over in the properties panel. So I'm just gonna select layer one, and right in here we got the 3D, or extrusion depth. I'm just gonna grab that and just slide it back in until we get it to where it looks like an actual saw blade. That's about, probably about right, right there, I think. Well, we'll just do 15. And there is my saw blade. So let's go and grab our tool again, move it back in space and ro rotate it around. And now I have my 3D saw blade. And what I would actually do is on the extrusion material, I'm going to go in here and add a reflection property to this. Let's go and increase the reflection of the extrusion to maybe about 30 is a good place to start. And if I did a quick render, let's do Shift Option Command R. And you can zoom in here and we can see that it's reflecting those elements right there in the edges of that blade. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's, you can see how easy it is to take that simple 2D element. Yeah. And, um, if I wanted to, I could actually do this. Let's add a reflection to the front inflation, this front face here. So let's do this. Let's add an image-based light. So front inflation, I'm actually going to go into the environment settings here. And here we have IBL, which is image-based light. I'm just going to create a new texture. And we'll make it like five by five inches. So you can see it really blows out on the image, and that's because it's defaulting to white. And the Im entire image is white, so I'm going to go to Edit Texture here. 
So what it does that is just simply all white. So what I like to do is actually just give it a black fill first. And obviously white is too, too harsh. So I'm actually going to create a couple of oval shapes here, just offset, just kind of randomly positioning them uh, in the graphic. And then just uh, fill them with gray. I don't want to use white, because obviously, as you can see, white is really, really harsh. And really, the, a way to look at image-based lights is it's like a, a layer mask for light. You, uh, black in the image is going to hum, mask the light, or keep the light from shining. Gray is going to let a little bit of light uh, show through. And then white would let it shine through 100%. So if I close this, save the changes, and if I move my object around, or actually, I'm going to move the light around. You can see you this little orb here. And as I move this around, you can see the light change. You see a little edges on there. So it kind of gives you that effect of, you know, like you see a 3D object and it's got like the studio lights kind of shining on a, on a metallic surface, something right. like that. That's really what this is designed to do. And when I do a render, it's going to give me a much more realistic environment. So I'm using these a lot more in CS6 than I ever did in CS5. I mean, CS5 did have image-based lights, but it wasn't quite as intuitive and easy to work with as it is now. But since it's an element right here and you can add it to the environment, it makes it that much more realistic. Now, on some of those image masks or the, the lights that you work on, does that work almost like a gel or a screen for the light? Does it diffuse the light? So if you added a 50% you know, gray uh, area mm -hmm. to that spot, does it diffuse it by 50% Actually, and would. so forth? And just kind of just, it's, so it'll run the full spectrum of, Pretty much, of yeah. the gray scale. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. That's very cool. Yeah, it's, it's, and that's, and it wasn't quite, yeah, as like I was saying, it wasn't quite getting across that concept in CS5. I think people were thinking, oh, I have to use an image or something like that. But there's actually, if you go into the 3D menu and go to get more content here, this element right here at the very bottom of the menu, it will open up a web page. And it's actually the 3D page for the Adobe 3D page. And then you look down here, and you've got stages and sets, models and message, me message, meshes. <laughs> Um, materials, these are all free things you can download. And you can see this last one is image-based lights. It's actually a set of preset files, pre-designed files, all with different random shapes, like I just created, that have uh, image-based lights. So you can certainly download those and play around with them and use them. And they also give you a good idea of how to create your own image-based lights. So it's really a, a great way to really kind of experiment with them. But, but be sure to check out all the, the stages and sets, models and meshes, and you know, all those are free downloads. Add them right into your Photoshop, and you can work with them uh, right away. So. I love 3D. I just can't get it. Yeah, it's very cool. So um, let's do this. We're going to draw. Um, let's go and see what Lindsay Adler's got for us uh, today. And then we're going to come right back here and we'll see what Felix has all got for right, us. Great. So, all right, let's check it out. Thanks, guys. RC here with Lindsay Adler. Lindsay, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Nice to see you. Good. Hey, look, she's back. We got another one for you. Now, in case you don't know, Lindsay is a New York-based fashion and portrait photographer. She's the author of two books, and the most recent book is an Amazon top pick for 2011. Mm -hmm. I have to always brag for her. I'm sorry. Thank but you. you've got a really good example here on... You know what? I'm not even going to tell you. You've got to take a look at this. This is pretty cool. Okay. Awesome. Um, so for fashion photography, I get inspiration from anything and everything. And I was looking basically at other artwork, and I was searching online, you know, kind of wasting time, uh, looking at other images. And I saw something that was an ink blot test. You know, basically mm -hmm. with an ink blot, you fold the paper in half. And it got me thinking about symmetry. Mm -hmm. And it got me thinking about the concept of how your eyes can read into seeing additional things when you for the ink blot test, and so on and so forth. So I decided to do an entire editorial about symmetry. And so in this editorial, every shot that I did was mirrored on both sides. So both sides matched. Um, one other note I wanted to make about symmetry, specifically for portrait and fashion photography, um, one of the things that we consider beautiful as a culture, as a society, is symmetrical faces. Um, if you look at the biggest named supermodels, they have beautifully symmetrical features, even eyes, even nostrils, even lips. And so that's something when we see in our minds, we go, wow, that's a beautiful person. I'm very horribly self-conscious now because I'm like, oh, no. are my eyes symmetrical or not? Well, but you know, it's one of those things where you kind of see it, but it's, and it's... when you look at somebody, I mean, okay, now that I do too much fashion photography, I totally do notice some people, but like, you don't usually notice. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> OK, 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 OK. But that was one of those things that, that caught my eye here. And, and it was one. So you, so you did this entire, you did more than one image? I did, I, did, I think, about 12. Wow. Um, 12 okay. images. And they're all, they're all crazy and all mirrored. So for this picture, she has a really nice symmetrical face beforehand. 
-hmm. I mean, that's why she's a great model. Mm -hmm. um, this girl's really cool. She looks kind of alien-like, which is really neat because a lot of models, they do. They look kind of like aliens. Aliens. But like beautiful aliens. So I wanted to make this even more symmetrical. And I use symmetry all the time in my photographs. Landscapes, um, whether it's portraits, whether it's fashion. So in this instance, I'm going to show you how I took the symmetry to another, uh, another level. I come up here to the left and I grab the marquee tool. And I'm grabbing the rectangular marquee. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select basically half of the frame. So I'm going to select the left half and put it right down the middle of her nose. And I'm going to hit um, Apple J. Right. And so what Apple J does is if you look, it just copied that selection into right. a new layer. Right. All right, so now I have that. Well, what do I do with it? If I click on that layer, I go to the Move tool, I can show transform controls, which is going to let me take that chunk that I just copied and move it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over itself. So if I show my transform tools, I can grab this left um, over here and drag it over the right. And what I'm looking for is I want it to be perfectly symmetrical. So I can go up here to the width, since I'm flipping it, I want to flip to minus 100. Basically, I'm taking the left and flipping it 100% the other direction. Okay. So I can just type in minus 100. OK. So what it gives me is if I then kind of shift this around a little bit, I can create it so that this girl is perfectly symmetrical. And what's weird is that she starts to look even more alien-like. Um, what I usually do if I do an effect like this is I'm going to come in. And if there's any like repeated patterns, I might erase it just a little bit mm -hmm. so that it's it's not as obvious. Like even just that right there, moving the hair, mm -hmm. um, it, then it makes it a little more confusing. Um, not quite sure if it's mirrored. Looking at that, okay, I'm gonna come down here. Maybe make it a little less even. I'm just basically erasing. Okay, well there's a you know harsh line there. I can go through, use a softer brush. I'm just erasing. I can use a softer brush less opacity and just kind of blend it a little bit more and I can kind of just even it out more and so what I'm doing is I'm yeah by creating by breaking the symmetry in soft parts exactly. all of a sudden it's, it makes you start thinking about it and that was the thing that I thought was really really cool because you brought the image up and I was like wow that looks really really good and then when you showed me the before thing I was go oh my god that's why I thought it was really good right. because of that symmetry that the fact that everything was proportionally even, but I couldn't tell in some spots. I'm like, is she, it is. Right, does she really look like that? And I mean, you're looking at the hands matching perfectly. Um, just as one other note, that's something that was interesting that I did try. Um, have you ever played with blend modes before you play with blend modes a lot? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I go into blend modes, um, I have the ability to basically just see what happens. And I do mm -hmm. that sometimes, just mm -hmm. see what happens. So I was going to darken mode. And what it's going to do there is it lets, basically, it gets rid of whatever was white and only shows mm -hmm. um, what was black. So when I mirrored it there, start, like for me, I just thought like, okay. It starts to bring back a little of what was there originally, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it just kind of layers and textures. So um, I, what I ended up doing when I actually did this picture is I turned it to darken mode. You know, again, if you, if you try different modes, mm -hmm. it's totally, you know, totally different effects. Um, but anyway, so if I go to darken mode, if you look at that, you can see her ear there. Mm -hmm. Well, what you can do is you can basically just paint white, because what it does is it gets rid of white. Just paint white over that ear and in the finger. And I'm painting on the bottom layer, not the top layer. Oh, that's kind of cool. Because basically what it does is anything that's white, it just gets rid of it. it, it if, it's, if it's white, it's not considered into that darken mode. So I basically just get rid of it off of, and I'm you know, being really That's fast here. That's a great here, Photoshop tip, I have to tell you. So I do that. And so if you zoom back and look at this girl, she's beautiful, she's weird looking, and she's perfectly symmetrical. And so it kind of fits that you know, supermodel even face, even though she's really wacky. That's awesome. Look at that fashion stuff and a hidden Photoshop tip. Lindsay, thank you so much. All right, thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, we are back. So we want to thank Lindsay for joining us today, showing us some cool stuff. And she's got a lot of more cool stuff over on KelbyTraining.com. She, in fact, she just released, we just released a new course of hers called Fashion with a Flair. Did I get that right? Um, 
Our producer is over there nodding. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> so definitely want to check that out. Just uh, went up just recently on Kelby Training, so definitely check that out really soon. So right now we're going to take a quick break. Come right back here, and Felix is going to share some cool stuff regarding the cover of the newest issue of Photoshop User. So stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> I am Joel Grimes. I'm a commercial advertising photographer. I've been doing this for over 35 years. I'm here at Kelby Training to teach you guys how I do my composites. I start in the studio. We take a subject, put it on a white sweep, shoot uh, with uh, my three-edge gritty little lighting techniques. Then we go in the field. We shoot some HDR backgrounds. We're putting it all together in Photoshop and making it one amazing killer image. If you're interested in this kind of compositing, come check out my classes. Am I bringing it up? Yeah. All right, so it's been a very long time since we last saw you, but we're back, and I'm going to turn things over to Mr. Felix Nelson, creative director of NAP, to share some cool stuff with us. Felix. All right, well, uh, if you saw the, the newest issue of uh, Photoshop User May June, the um, CS6 issue, um, I designed the cover, and it was kind of based off the Hunger Games posters that they did, and it was very mm -hmm. kind of a heavy, grungy, um, very kind of industrial look to it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, once I did the cover, Chris Main, the uh, editor, decided, hey, why don't you do a, a down and dirty uh, column for it? So in the July-August issue of Photoshop User, we will have a full-blown tutorial on how to do the cover. Mm. Um, I don't have enough time to show you how to do all the different things to it, but I will kind of deconstruct it. A, give us a teaser. Yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. let you see how, actually, it's very simple what I did. Um, yeah. So I can break it down for you. We won't go over all the steps, but you certainly can see how um, just using layer styles can make something look very dimensional in 3D and actually very mm -hmm. realistic. Mm -hmm. So if you take a look at the... Uh, at the file, here it is how the image looked on the final uh, version of it. Um, it really just started with this background image. It's just a, a rock background image that we got from uh, iStock Photo. Um, and what I did, I designed the bulk of the logo and illustrated it on my pads in Illustrator. Um, and you can see I just brought all the pads in individually, labeled them one, two, and three, because those are going to be the four layers that I have. Mm -hmm. And what you can do basically is make that selection copy it and place it on its own layer. So I'll show you what the layer looks like once it's copied with the background on there. And you can see it's exactly, it's a, you know, it's identical. It's the same background, just minus the effects. All we did was add an outer glow and a drop shadow. Nothing. You're using the same texture. Same texture, the whole, same, time, yeah. the whole thing. You never change the texture, never rotate it, never do anything mm -hmm. differently. Um, so that was step one, first layer. The next one is we did exactly the same thing. We take, I loaded the uh, path for, uh, path three, made a selection, copy and pasted it. Now the only difference thing we did here is I took the the layer, once I put it, I changed the hue and saturation just so I get a little warmer kind of feel to it mm -hmm. and give it some dimension. But again, if you take off the effects, it's exactly the same tech, it's the same background, nothing's changed at all. A slight color change just gives it that much difference. That much difference, and then by just adding a slight bevel and emboss, another outer glow, and a tiny little bit of a drop shadow, we're just creating an illusion of depth. There's really nothing, there's not anything 3D about this, it's just creating that same illusion. Mm -hmm. um, again, the next layer, it's exactly the same thing. And that's an even a more simplified version. It's just the same background layer with just a simple drop shadow on it. But just because we've got it in different layers, um, we've added some slightly different layer styles to it, it's really making it appear to have a lot of dimension, a lot of depth, which is not really there. It's just mm. your eyes being tricked into thinking it's there. Um, and finally, we got the very last layer we did. And now this one is, a, the, the layer style is a little bit more complicated. Mm. But again, if you break it down, it's very simple. Um, we start off with a drop shadow. And you can see the drop shadow on the edges there add an outer glow, and again, that's just kind of to define the outer edges of the image. Um, did a slight and color a overlay. dark outer glow, right? Yep, yeah, yeah. We're, just putting, we're putting a dark out. It's, it's basically adding a shadow, and it's almost, if, you, if you look at the old, uh, or any kind of cartoon drawings, any kind mm -hmm. of comic book strips, they tend to outline everything in black and then add their depth by adding a more of a solid black outline. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of doing the same thing here. We're just kind of outlining the edges so you can get the feel that, that it's casting some kind of a shadow, and it's, and, it's, and it's giving you the outside edges, but again, it's just all kind of being faked in there. There's nothing, oh, yeah. there's nothing really dimensional to it. And then again, by just adding a bevel and emboss, you get that little bit, you get some highlights and some shadows, so again, it gives it that little bit of depth. And in essence, that's, that's really basically it. Now, the other couple of things I did, I wanted to add a little bit more detail. So I just put a couple of cracks 
that I added onto it. And you can see there's a couple cracks that are added at the top there and across the bottom. And that little bit of wear to it. Right. You know? And the great thing about it, you know, you look at it and, and you, if you zoom in, you can kind of, it, it gives you the appearance that, boy, it has a lot of, you know, depth and texture. It's nothing more than a black painted mm -hmm. line on there. And let me, let me show you what that looks like. It really is just, I took a black, brush and just paint it in these cracks. Mm -hmm. There's no bevel emboss, there's no layer style. It's just by adding that on top of everything you've already created, it gives you the illusion that there's a lot more there than, than really that, that there is. Let me light these all back up. It, really, it makes me think of, because I was just this past weekend, I was, at, uh, I was out in LA for Joel Grimes' um, photography workshop, and it was amazing, by the way. But I, every, as you're doing this, I keep thinking about something he said in his process, it's selling the fake. Right. You know, yeah. and these subtle, subtle things always make a huge difference. You know, like the, yeah. just adding the cracks just adds that, you know, that little bit of dimensionality and realism to it. Right, it's, it's all, selling the it's, fake. it's yeah. basically smoke and mirrors. You're yeah. making the eye, you're making the, the viewer see dimension mm -hmm. and see depth. It's really not there, but by adding these simple layer styles, it mm -hmm. really does give the final effect, this, this really de highly detailed 3D look to it. And then the final thing we did, since we wanted to have it appear to be very kind of rusty and stuff, um, we added some, some rust to it. Um, let's see, let me get some of the images in here. And again, all these, layers, I mean, they look very complicated. They're nothing more than different colors of paintbrushes. And basically, I just take a paintbrush with some lighter browns and some darker browns and just drew in these rust spots. And like you said, once you turn them off, it looks pretty plain. By mm -hmm. throwing them in there, yeah, I mean, it looks, it gives it looks great very, without them, but then right. when you add that, it just... It just it, gives you a little something else. And the very last thing I did, I wanted the, the, this foreground element to kind of pop out a little bit more. And I could do layer styles and do all, I mean, I can do all kind of other things, but I just create another layer and just put another you know, kind of top light on it. And you can see that just makes that kind of pop mm -hmm. right at the very end there. So really by just, it's basically four, sty uh, four layer styles um, from the same background layer and you get this really cool, rich, dimensional, you know, 3D looking object that didn't take that much time to do. Um, but again, you'll, we, in the July, August issue of Photoshop, usually you'll see it, it'll be spelled out step by step. So we'll give you all the settings and everything for ev all the layer styles and this everything. Is, it's always amazed me when I watch Felix do this because I still learn, a lot of what I figured out with layer styles, I learned from this guy. Because he just does things with layer styles that I just, I, I, I am still stunned with every now and then. It's just the realism he brings with like, just layer styles. Because I always tell people, don't look at layer styles for what they are. You know, a drop shadow is a drop shadow, but try different things with it. In combinations, know, they can really give you some good effects at the yeah. end. I mean, a lot of what we do in, in their down and dirty columns, because Corey and I write most of the down and dirty columns. Mm -hmm. And if you look at a lot of the stuff that we do, is really just layer styles and combinations give you very photorealistic. You yeah, know, between uh, brushes effects. and layer styles, sure. I mean, you can achieve so much. And I always tell people, those are my two favorite panels, layer styles yeah. and the brushes panel, because the combinations are infinite. You can come up with so many different you know, effects, and I'm still experimenting and come up with new things, as you do, and it's just, it just makes it that much easier. And, look, and the, look what you can sell with one texture and a few layer styles. Right. I mean, that's, that's just blown away. So yeah, again, make sure you check it out. If you're a NAT member, you will be getting this issue soon if you don't have it already. I think it they've should, already it should be out already. Yeah. So if you are a NAT member, you, you have this. If not, go and get it. Get on that NAT membership. Speaking of that, let's talk about a couple of other things. We uh, mentioned Kelby Training a while ago. Certainly want to check that out. KelbyTraining.com. We've got classes up all the time. I've got a few new CX6 courses. CS6. I'm still having, I get tongue tied <laughs> when I say CS6 for some reason. I, just, I want to say something else, but I'm not going to mention it. Yeah. Um, too funny. But a uh, whole bunch of new CS6 courses on uh, KelbyTraining.com. I've got a new 3D course. So all the content guys, uh, Photoshop guys, have courses on there as well. And we've got new courses coming up all the time. Seminars, make sure you check out KelbyTrainingLive.com. Um, we've got the Lightroom 4 seminars, a whole list of new dates with Matt is uh, going around the country teaching the Light, Light, well, Lightroom 4. Dave Cross is also out there doing his um, I think he's called it the Unleashed Tour now, is that right? I, I believe so, yeah. It's been be renamed the, the Unleashed Tour. So be sure to check that out, kelbytraininglive.com. There's dates constantly being posted for that. Lastly, in September, coming up, coming up, it's still months away, <laughs> but in September, September 5th, I believe, we are going to be, again, in Las Vegas for Photoshop World. That's right, we are back. I hope we never stop going to Vegas. It's so much fun. Yeah, well, uh, we it's keep actually money, dangerous uh, yeah. to go to Vegas for Photoshop World because it's we have to work. It's hard to go to work in Vegas, but again, September fifth through the seventh, I believe it's um, 
and go to photoshopworld.com, you can see a list of all the instructors that are gonna be there. I'm gonna be there along with the other Photoshop guys there. Felix will be there. But he doesn't teach. Why? <laughs> oh, it's just you know, but it's 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 busy enough for you. Right. It, People don't it? realize the amount of work that goes on into putting on a, a show like Photoshop World, and it's run by our staff for the mm -hmm. most part. I mean, exactly. A, a, everyone that's that works here yeah. goes there, and they're working the show, and I'm there working the show just like everybody right. else. So, but I will say for top. what goes on at the show and what you see, in, and when you walk in the keynote and you see all the elaborate setup and everything like that. This man's responsible for that. He is responsible for how good Photoshop World looks. So you have to give him props for that because he does Thank you. awesome Thank you. every time. And he's dis he disappears. We never see him. <laughs> After the keynote, he's you got to fly under the radar. Yeah. He's got to fly under the radar. Everybody's like, where's Felix? I don't know. OK. Um, so let's take another break. We're going to come back and do a few more giveaways. i got some stuff here we're going to give away. And we're going to wrap things up. So stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm David Zeiser. Hey, we have one great Kelby training video coming your way, and this time it's going to be on couples. What I'm trying to bring to this video is find the great locations to get some great photographs of your couples, how you can put great lighting on your couples, and then also how you can get great expressions. I can guarantee that you're going to love it. Join me on this Kelby training video, Shooting Couples. And we're back. I had no time to prep between. <laughs> that was the shortest break ever. All right. Um, so giveaways. So um, we have some stuff we're going to give away here today. We actually got two sets of prizes here. You guys are giving away tons of stuff. We just, it just, the prize packages just keep getting more yeah. insane. So I have a book here, Google Plus for Photographers. How appropriate, since Google Plus Photographers Conference is going on right as now, we speak. Right. The keynote probably is happening right, right now. Let's tune in. No. They're not broadcasting it live, are they? Not this time. Uh, no, I think they are live streaming some of the, some of the classes, some of the but classes, not, the, okay. not the keynote, yeah. So you will get this, as well as On One's Focal Point. And we also have On One Perfect Effects 3. And On One's Photo Frame Professional Edition. That is one prize package for some All right, and looks like viewer. And what we'll else we'll give we away another stack of stuff here. So we've got, looks like an On One software, the Perfect Mass 5. Mm-hmm. Uh, also giving away the uh, another On One software, Perfect Resize, the professional edition. It's not obvious we love On One at all, is it? No. So. <laughs> and yet again, some more On One software, Perfect Layers 2, uh, combined photos and endless creative options. Very nice. And it looks like last but not least, we have the iPad for Photographers by Jeff Carlson. Uh, another good book. Right there. All right. So how do you win these fabulous prizes? You go to KelbyTV.com, go to the Photoshop TV page, go down to the comment section, and go and fill out and just leave us a comment. Tell us uh, how much you love the show, how much you don't like the show. No, don't tell us that, because nobody doesn't like the show. Everybody loves the show. Everybody loves the show. Um, anything you'd like to see on the show, just leave a comment. We're going to pick two, mind you, two random winners from that. So be sure to do that, and we wish you the best of luck. So I want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, should have the guys, the rest of the guys here back this week, but I want to thank Mr. Felix Nelson for oh, coming welcome. in and filling in Thanks, for us today. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, and, uh, again, be sure to look for that step-by-step -step tutorial on that very thing he talked about in the uh, next issue, yeah. uh, Down and Dirty yeah. section of Photoshop yeah. Users. The July-August so, issue. July-August yeah. issue. Very good. So again, remember, if you're a net member, it's on its way soon. Uh, if you're not a net member, go to photoshopuser.com and check it out, and we hope to see you around. So again, thank you, and we'll see you guys later. Yeah.